I want to share my journey into the new age first, how I got so deep into it growing up with no Christian home, no Bible, no church. And then I want to share the core deceptions of the new age, why it's so popular. Why do six in 10 Christians have at least one new age belief? Why are so many Christians that I especially met in the new age falling away from Christ into this spiritually seductive, you know, meditation and light and energy healing and, and all these different things? Why is it so popular? Why is it the biggest threat against the church right now? There are reasons why, and I'm going to expose it. And I just actually created a YouTube channel where I'm going to start exposing it more in depth because I am tired of seeing people fall to these deceptions and not understand the word and be able to compare the word to the lies. Because this book is the truth. Knowing this book, your sword is sharp. Any, th any attack that comes, you can slice it away. Knowing the truth, you can see the lies. You can see the evil that disguises itself as healing and love and light. But you know that behind, that's just a, the angel disguised as light. That's actually a, a gnarly demon trying to take your soul to torment for eternity. You know, the stakes are high. So I grew up with, like I said, no knowledge of the Bible. I did not even know the gospel until two years ago. About two years and two months that I, that I found out that Jesus Christ died for my sins, lived a perfect life, died on the cross, rose again, and if you believe in him, you have eternal life. I didn't even know that. I thought he was just some influential guy. Um, people loved him, clearly worshipped him as, as some big leader, some spiritual leader. I even went to the Vatican as a kid, uh, like a family vacation, and I, I was seeing it, but nothing clicked. I never heard anything about it. I didn't know anything about it. I was like, whoa, this is incredible artwork here, like Michelangelo or whatever, you know, Da Vinci. But I didn't know the gospel, and there are so many people like that who don't know the gospel at all. And when they're seeking, when they're searching, when they come of age like I did, I was wondering, like, do we really come from a bunch of atoms that just exploded and created a unicellular organism and then a multicellular and then a fish and then an ape and then us humans? Like, is that really where we came from? And like, if so, like, where are we going? You know, where is this process going? And I started asking these questions and I became very interested in healing and, and the best, best method to heal, psychology, you know, psychiatrics, uh, medication, you know, what are the best ways for people who are suffering from such torment, depression, anxiety, suicide, it's all increasing. It's all increasing exponentially right now. And I had a really burning passion to know this. So as I got into psychology in high school, I started realizing that there's a cap at what psychology can explain, that there's something more, there's something spiritual, you know, there's something deeper to life than just our brain causes emotions and your brain chemicals aren't creating enough of that to create happiness. You know, I don't think we're just robots. There's something more here, you know? And I started investigating the spiritual realm. I got into Buddhism. You know, I got into Taoism, Eastern thought, yoga, meditation, mindfulness, um, all these different ways of, of looking at life and wondering what is the cure to suffering? The Buddhists believe the cure to suffering is eliminating all your desire. So if you don't have any wants or needs, oh, you're never going to get let down. You'll have no suffering. So they literally, monks will meditate all day, months at a time, without eating, just emptying their mind of all wants and all desire. And Buddhist meditation is emptying your mind, emptying your thoughts, analyzing your thoughts, and realizing that your ego is actually the enemy. So basically, your soul, your personality, who you are, who God created, the uniqueness of your personality that no one else shares, that's the enemy. You need to dissolve that and merge with the source of creation, this, this ethereal source, and reach the state of nirvana, enlightenment. So it's this, it's this super evil look at who we are and who you are, and to eliminate yourself to reach enlightenment, and then you'll be in bliss forever. And then you'll be detached from the cycle of reincarnation and detached from the cycle of suffering. Every religion seems to know that there's something wrong with this world. There's something clearly wrong. You know, they're a little off on knowing what exactly it is because Satan has deceived them. But 
every human in them knows that there's something wrong. What is it? What is it? Well, it's sin. It's sin. But if you know it's sin, then the chances of you needing forgiveness and, and coming to salvation are extremely high. So the devil will tell you, oh, it's just, you know, it's just suffering. It's your desire. And there's a million other deceptions. But I got into this Buddhism. I got into this Taoism, this Eastern mode of thought. Started dabbling into yoga, you know, because people, you know, doing yoga. In the, in the beginning, you want to do it because it seems healthy. You know, you're stretching, you're, you know, your physical exercise, getting peace of mind. Little do you know, the covering that is over yoga, where yoga came from, is literally from the ancient sage. They channeled entities that downloaded the, the texts, the Vedas, they call it, and the Bhagavad Gita, which is like the Hindu Bible. There's a whole pantheon of gods. And they received these specific poses and specific meditations and specific ways, spiritual disciplines to achieve union with the universal consciousness. That's what yoga means, to be yoked with united with. It's about yoking yourself with the universal consciousness they called Brahma, which is extremely demonic, and you're literally yoking yourself with the devil unintentionally. Most people doing yoga have no idea about that. You know, they're going to yoga class as exercise, and but you shouldn't really be calling it yoga, because if you're doing yoga, you're doing what I just said. I actually became a certified yoga instructor. I went to Thailand. I trained. I have hundreds of hours of training. Like, you know, I know what I'm talking about here, but I started getting into this stuff unknowingly creating bondage in my life, extreme bondage in my life. And getting into college, I was fascinated because I started seeing that there is a cap on, on what psychology can explain. There's something supernatural. There's a spiritual realm. How are people being tormented in their sleep, sleep paralysis, saying these entities are, you know, these demons are over them, choking them and stuff? Is the mind creating that? I was also getting into psychedelic drugs, exploring consciousness, uh, uh, LSD, mushrooms, DMT. Joe Rogan, the big podcaster, he's popularized DMT. I wanted to go to the Amazon, take ayahuasca, all these different plant medicines that I believed could heal the soul and could bring healing to the more spiritual aspects of one's life. You know, I thought this was a great thing. I thought this was a good thing. I heard amazing testimonies, amazing stories. And in the end, I started to realize, yes, there is a spiritual realm. We're not just a bunch of atoms and matter and we go, everything goes black the second we die. There is a spiritual realm and demons are real. And, but I thought there were good spirits and bad spirits. So I wanted to know the good ones. I, 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 I talked to people who would channel... Uh, beings and would be able to tell you things about your dead relatives or your dead family members or your dead ancestors, things you didn't even know until you check later. They're like, yo, look in the chest of that photograph. You're wearing this clothes. And they're telling you this about what they felt about this family event that happened. They're literally inserting all of these lies and you think it's your dead you know, relative. So you're like, whoa, this is amazing. I didn't get to talk to them about this when they were alive. And so I thought this was like a good thing. I'm like, whoa, this is an amazing supernatural gift this person has. And the whole new age is about we're supernatural. We have a divine potential. Humans are divine. And we need to unlock our potential and know our true spiritual gifts. So I thought all of this stuff was amazing. But I started realizing, you know, demons are real. And I want to be able to address this because this is a real thing. So as I kept meeting people in the new age, entity removal specialists, that's what they call themselves, you know, you, they have the discernment and, and seeing the demons and using their light that they've generated over years of meditation and years of increasing their energy and their aura, they're able to sense these deeper things. And a lot of this comes from the Eastern thought. I wanted to travel to China. I actually did go to China, but the guy I was going to learn from, a Tai Chi Qigong master, he had a family emergency and had to bail last second. I still ended up going to China having a great trip with my mom. But I, I, was, I was dedicated to this stuff. I would read books for hours and hours a day. I went to college for business and got a degree in business. But my passion was this. My passion was this, the deeper things in life. You know, what is the truth? I was seeking the truth in every single way I could no matter what it was, every ancient religion, every new, you know, modern discovery. And the new age is so good at doing that. It's so good at hiding the falsehoods, hiding the lies in this science, science-based, science-verified, uh, uh, 
ancient spiritualities. So it's like, oh, I'm taking everything from the ancients that they once always knew, and we're now discovering it with science that it's been true all along. And you feel like you're onto something. You feel like you're on the frontier. You're a pioneer in, in the spiritual you know, arena that you're creating. You're truly discovering the truth and at the front lines of it that, oh, the Bible, man, that's 2,000 years old. That's 4,000 years old. That's completely dogmatic. That's just tradition. You know, you, you feel bad for the souls that are stuck in that, honestly. Like, I, I would feel bad for people who truly believed that this was truth. I thought this is a fairy tale my whole life, even though I didn't know what was in it. That was just the programming I grew up with, the generational, you know, inheritance almost in my mind, the beliefs that were passed down to me was that. And so many millions of souls have even worse beliefs passed down to them. People who grow up in serious Hinduism, or serious Satanism, or serious Islam. They have these beliefs. Their whole, their whole identity, their family, their community is centered on these things. So coming against these deceptions, you're not just saving people in the now. You're saving all future generations. And Satan knows that. That's why there's generational curses and generational blessings. So having the knowledge about the deceptions in the new age and all of these things is so key to, to eliminate it from affecting millions of other souls that'll come later. And it is the biggest threat right now. And trust me, every single person I met in the new age, a lot of them, they came from the church. They grew up in a Christian family, pastors, kids. They have one bad experience in church or they have a dry church with no power of God. You know, they don't see the manifestation of the power. So they see these psychics. They're like, whoa, this is actually, you know, there's power here. There's actually something here. All I do is here. You got to do this. You got to do that. You know, Jesus is Lord. Keep believing this. They don't see power. They don't see fruit. They don't see the true, you know, manifestation of God. So they see all this stuff. They take psychedelics and they're getting thrown up into whatever dimension, thinking like 10 years go by and they come down and it's five minutes and they're like, whoa, like, I don't see the Bible talking about this. Well, you know, if they read it, they would read the book of Ezekiel and the book of Revelation. They would realize, yeah, no, God does this stuff too. But, um, people get into this. That's how they get seduced. And the cure to that in the church is showing the true power of the Holy Spirit. Not just preaching the word all the time, which is amazing, but having the demonstration of power. Like Paul said, he came with not just human wisdom, but the demonstration of the power for people's faith to be built on that. That is the biggest counteraction to the new age deception. If you know the true power of God, if you know the true story, and you, you actually experience the power of God like Moses and the Pharaoh, Pharaoh had great power. The New Age has great power. All the occult, the psychics have great power. Moses had more. Jesus Christ has more. Holy Spirit has more. And if only people knew that, they'd fly from the New Age as fast as you can believe it. And that's what happened to me. I still, at this point, getting into this stuff that I was just saying, yoga and everything, didn't know the gospel. And until I was at lunch with a, with a friend of mine, I get a FaceTime from a guy named Luke. And I'm like, who is this guy? And, and I put it down because I'm at lunch. I put the phone over. And a couple hours later, I text him because I realized, oh, this is the guy I met on campus freshman year who was like, hey, do you believe in God? He tried to stop me. I'm like, you know, on my way trying to be nice. I'm like, you know, I'm believing maybe like a divine consciousness or, you know, a higher power, but not, not the God of the Bible and blah, blah. And I give him my number just to be nice. Never texted him after. Talked for 60 seconds. I'm like, why is this guy FaceTiming me? Like, what the heck is this? So I'm like, dude, why'd you FaceTime me? He's like, what are you talking about? I'm like, what are you talking about? And <laughs> he's like, dude, number one, I don't FaceTime people. And number two, I don't even know who you are. You're three years back in my texts. And I'm like, okay, like there's either three options here. This guy's some religious fanatic trying to lure me in to convert me with this weird thing, thinking I, there's something divine when really he just opened all the people that he met. He's just trying to get some more conversions and click FaceTime and acts like it's something divine. But I'm like, dude, if that, the level of deceit and evil to actually do that to someone, I'm like, I want to meet this guy to see, like, is this guy, did he, did he click FaceTime or what is this? And um, another part of me was like, you know, maybe this is the universe, you know, guiding me. To, to study Christianity, to study the Bible, because I had known 
all these other spiritual disciplines and teachings and religions. For years, I'd studied it, never gave anything to the Bible, never gave any, any you know, attention to the Bible. So I'm like, okay, maybe this is the universe guiding me to help these souls get out of this deception. So I'm like, hey, win-win, I'm going to meet this guy. And uh, I end up agreeing to do Bible study with him. Hey, free classes pretty much for me to understand the Bible. Uh, every Wednesday, I meet with him for an hour, and he's telling me the basics. The wages of sin is death. All have fallen short, and all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And Jesus Christ lived a perfect, sinless life. He is God who came to earth, who died without sin, without blemish, the ultimate sacrifice, who died on the cross for you, for you individually. He would do it again for you individually to save your soul from eternity and to save your soul from the wages of your sin, which is death and eternal torment. And I was like, wow, I cannot believe this guy believes this. This is crazy. Literally not believing in this dude, Jesus, and I'm going to hell. There's no way God would send me to hell just because I don't believe in this story about Jesus Christ. And I'm trying to find out all the specifics, like are there different tiers to heaven? Are there, you know, is there different... Uh, tears to hell and all these things. I was so fast. I want to know what the Bible said, but man, he was just pushing conversion. And week after week, he would pray for me and pray that God revealed himself to me. And, and I was trying to honestly plant kind of seeds of doubt to like open his mind. I'm like trying to find areas where I can be, Hey man, that doesn't really make sense here. You know, you might want to start realizing, you know, the true divine potential you do have and just get into the new age with me. Little did I know, but Got to the point where I'm like, okay, he's pushing conversion too much. This is a little weird. I kind of want to just learn the Bible. So I told him I'm going to study it on my own. And, and I end up barely studying it on my own, reading a book, bit of the book of Daniel because the New Agers love the book of Daniel um, about his fasting and all these other things. So I'm trying to take what I can out of the Bible. But I pretty much just put it on the shelf. And it isn't till I start seeing this whole demonic thing way more in the new age and becoming way more fascinated and wanting to help people with it. Because I really wanted to create like a new age ministry, a ministry of healing, a ministry of helping people, blending psychology with the spiritual and bringing people back to wholeness. You know, that's what my kind of life passion was. So I wanted to have every possible thing I could have in my arsenal to be able to help people. So I started researching the whole, the, the demonic, the spiritual realm, deliverance. Uh, I found a few Christian art, uh, authors, Bob Larson, some other like Catholic guy, like Gabriel something, and then a lot of other new age people, uh, um, a lot of psychics and things like that. So I just got all my research, laid it out, but I kept reading this Bob Larson and I was like, kind of interested in what he was saying. I still didn't know that he believed that Christ was God. I thought there was a big blend of kind of Christians that you don't, that's not like the thing, that, that Jesus Christ is the son of God. I still didn't know that that's like, you believe that, you just have faith in that. It's that simple. God has made it that simple to just believe in the work he did on the cross. Like that was just ridiculous to me. That made no sense to me. So but that's what it is. That's how simple it is. And that's what, honestly, my salvation came down to that, is knowing the true nature of Jesus Christ, not as some enlightened guy, not as some dude who ascended some super high state of consciousness and, and maybe a, 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 some bit of truth got passed down in the Bible, but a lot of it's in the text that they destroyed and that I could reach that same state of consciousness and that the whole the evil force, Satan, was trying to prohibit people and deceive people from knowing their true power. So I started researching this into the demons. I started seeing it. I started discerning it more in people, people who were tormented, who had horrible experiences on psychedelics, instantly demon-possessed. You know, you can get instantly demon-possessed on psychedelics. You will receive insane trances and visions like you can't even believe. If you take really high-dose psychedelics, you will launch into completely other realms, and you'll read the book of Revelation like, yeah, this is, this is normal stuff. And you receive these, these, this knowledge about who you are on like what your journey is, what your mission is. And you think it's this very light, amazing, loving, beautiful, cosmic thing. But it's Satan disguising an angel of light. And people don't know that 
until they truly come to know Christ and those spirits that they've been guiding them, that they think are so good and helping people and truly are helping people. They're seeing people get helped. They're seeing people get, get healed and, 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 and benefited. Those spirits, go, they turn directly against you and they start tormenting you. They go from deception to torment. And you can talk to any New Ager who's been saved, who's been in this, me, me as well. I went through month-long migraine headaches after I was saved jaw clenching or something in the night. I don't even know. I couldn't even go outside and hang out with friends because I couldn't speak. I was in so much pain. And I knew these demons were coming against me. I knew that I had found the truth when I was saved. I knew when I gave my life to Christ that this was an eternal decision. My whole life had changed forever. I was studying the scriptures every day, reading the Bible every day, fasting as much as I could, even though it was so hard. It was so hard. But they turned from deception to torment. And Christians who are knowledgeable, they take these drugs and these psychedelics. They want to explore consciousness. If you can't be deceived, you're going to get tormented. Like there are people who get sent to some galactic prison and tormented for 20 years. They wake up and it's 30 minutes have gone by. Like, but if you are, are curious and you don't know the Bible and you're not really, you don't know Christ, you'll have some incredible journey. You'll see all these amazing things and you'll be like, wow, this is amazing. You'll find out what your true calling is. You'll come back ready to go, ready to go deeper in, wanting to take more. It's, it's so, Satan is so elusive because all he wants is your eternity. And all, the gospel is about eternity. Jesus Christ, salvation, it's all about eternity. All the temporary healing you can receive in this lifetime, Satan will give it to you as long as he takes your eternity. The faith, the true faith is about living with the kingdom mindset, the kingdom perspective. Look at all of the apostles they're in prison. They're in hunger. They're in shipwrecks. They're, in, they're being flogged and tortured, but they're in joy in their spirit because they know that they're fighting for an eternal reward, an eternal kingdom. They're fighting for Jesus Christ. And they know that this life, the sufferings in this life compare nothing to the glory that will be revealed in them. They know this. They're aware of this so they don't get deceived. Like any one of us could be like, yo, I'm getting thrown in prison. God, what the heck? I thought you would bless me. You know, you're, I'm, getting, I'm getting tortured. I'm getting, you know, people are criticizing me and all these things. I thought I was, thought I was in this for the, for the blessings. That's not how it is. That's not, that's not how it is. And it's so easy to fall for that. And even in the church today, for people to leave, lose this kingdom mindset and adopt this new age belief that everything's about this life and increasing your joy, increasing your energy, increasing your love and your light and your vibration and ascending your consciousness. It's all focused on this life, but it's false. And not until these supernatural things started happening to me and I started seeing demons and starting to see that, whoa, my techniques are not working. You know, um, they're manifesting, but they're arrogant. They're, they're not getting cast out. I see kind of how they're influencing the person's life, getting them engaged in certain things. But how do I make what happened, what I see in these videos happen, in, you know, in front of me? Nothing was working. And not until a, a big time manifestation happened um, that in my mind for about an hour trying to cast this thing out, I started hearing the word Jesus, the name Jesus, say Jesus. And I'm like, you know, no, I don't, I don't want this person to think I'm a Jesus freak. You know, that's, Christians are weird. That's a cult. And um, so I didn't say Jesus. Maybe it was God. I wouldn't want to be like the seven sons of Sceva and get attacked. Who knows? I did not say Jesus. But after that, when it did not get cast out, and when I was really trying to help that person, and I was assuming it was a demon, I started to have a lot of doubt, a lot of confusion, a lot of guilt for trying to help this person, but not knowing, was this dissociative identity disorder? Is this bipolar? Is this, you know, uh, something else, inner child? Or is this a legit demon? Because this person had been involved in worshiping astrology goddesses and gods and a deep and kundalini yoga where the serpent goes up your spine and achieves enlightenment and awakening. They'd have been involved in everything where, you know, two plus two equals four, four but I was just double checking. And I wanted to double check hard. So I scheduled all these appointments with these kind of new age entity removal people. Um, I looked up Bob Larson and he happens to be in my city in a month for a seminar. So I'm like, whoa, perfect timing. I call his office, talk to his assistant. It's free to the public, uh, the seminar. But I'm like, I got to talk to Bob one-on-one. -on -one. You know, I got to know what this is. And this guy clearly has the most results. 
So I schedule an appointment. I get the last appointment out of 40 that he has scheduled. And I go with two of my unbeliever friends and I, and we witness the true power of God in action. We witness something none of us have ever seen in our lives. Four to five people manifested, crying, weeping, yelling, laughing, screaming, demons manifesting. And I'd watched the videos for a while, so I kind of was, I knew about that. My friends weren't as aware. But the woman who gets taken up, the demon, the name of the demon is the same demon that this person was worshiping that it manifested. And my friend, when he hears this demon say its name, looks at me, he's like, and I'm like, dude, these coincidences are just ridiculous. What is happening? And we witnessed this woman get delivered and the love for this person's soul that everyone in that room had and the, the, the torment and the anguish you could feel at the deepest level in this person during the deliverance that this demon was tormenting and just laughing how much it hated her and was ruining all of her marriages and her relationships and everything. You're like, man, like when she gets delivered, that's the most beautiful thing I've ever seen. The true power of God, the delivering power of God, the love of Jesus for his children, for every single soul I saw in front of me. And, you know, I went to the Bible teachings with that guy who's preaching the word, but that didn't cut it. What it took for me was seeing the power of God in action, seeing the true power right in front of my eyes. That's what made me start to question. And even then I wasn't, I was still stubborn. I went up for prayer after Bob had left with his family. It was like 11 at night. And I start talking to this pastor from Texas, and he's like, man, you don't have any power over these demons unless you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. His authority becomes your authority. You have the Holy Spirit in you. And I'm like, dude, gosh, every single one of them believes this, huh? Like, man, I got to do more research. You know, I'm not sure he actually resurrected, that he's actually God. Still think it's a deception, and he just felt bad for me. And... But everyone there was so nice. People were so nice to us. And we leave just like, wow, what did we just see? But we're still like, man, you know, that was a little culty. You know, one of my friends was definitely like, dude, I can't believe they believe that. If you just don't believe in Jesus, you're going to hell. It's the dumbest thing I've ever heard. And so the next day I meet with Bob, and that was the most powerful conversation I've ever had in my life. First 40 minutes are just intense spiritual debate everything, all the knowledge I had accumulated, all the conviction I had about my beliefs. It was just spiritual debate. And Bob was just boom, refuting, boom, refuting, boom, questioning. I mean, this guy is an encyclopedia on every world religion and every cult and every type of spiritual discipline, man. So this guy literally knows his stuff. And it came to the point where he was just preaching the hard word of God to me and preaching what sin is. And man, it just... He does. I was just with him literally this week, and he was telling me, I don't even know what happened in your mind. It, the, the conversation just clicked in an instant. Something happened, and, and he was just interviewing me, and I said, man, I, I honestly don't know, but I just remember looking out the window and in my mind feeling this intense conviction of how evil I actually am, how many evil things I've actually done. And trying to tell myself I'm some divine perfect, you know, trying to just create my own reality with my beliefs, trying to program everything in my life with my own beliefs and the law of attraction and all this dumb stuff. I'm like, man, wow. And I looked at Bob and I'm like, Bob, I'm ready. You know, I want Jesus Christ. And... And he leads me through a simple sinner's prayer, salvation prayer. And after that prayer, I just start weeping and bawling. Like I was an eight-year-old kid, just weeping, temper tantrum. But it was the deepest wailing. And all four of his ministers and him came around, were hugging me. We were all crying. and, And God was revealing himself to me so powerfully. How he had been with me my entire life. From beginning to end, his voice, where he had spoken to me and where I had rebelled and where I had gone a different way, he just connected all the dots and fully revealed his love for me because I felt so shameful and so guilty and so sorry. I felt so sorry for all this deceit and this pride and all this greed that was in my heart and just the true nature of my character was just shown on me. 
And it was unlike anything I'd seen myself before. I thought I was a different, uh, I thought I was a good person. I thought I was this great guy. And then boom, I just get shown all of this. And I'm just so sorry, but it's just this instant forgiveness and this love that came over me. And it just filled everything. And it was so powerful, unlike anything I'd ever seen. More healing happened in that one minute than four years deep in the new age. One minute. More healing to my soul, to my emotions, to my psyche happened in literally a minute than everything else I'd been seeking. And I was in such just desperation and the seek and all the anguish I had was just getting released because I had found him. I was looking for Jesus. Every New Agers, they're looking for Jesus. They're looking for Jesus that we know. They're all looking for Jesus. They're not just a bunch of witches and warlocks who are doing witchcraft. They're looking for the Lord, but they can't find him because there's a deceiver out there who's deceiving them. But you and I can be knowledgeable in this, and we can pluck out the seeds of Satan when we come across these people. We can use our sword, our knowledge of the word of God, the sword of the spirit, and we can slash away demons over people, demonic doctrines they're falling to. We can let, set them free and let them know who Jesus truly is. They're looking for love. They're looking for light. They're looking for the truth. The truth isn't a concept and the love isn't some emotion. They're both Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is love. God is love, and Jesus Christ is the truth, and we can show him that. We can show every single person that, and when I realized that, and I came to that, I was in my car after just weeping and weeping and weeping. My whole life had been changed. Everything I thought I was going to do in life, everything I thought I was, where I was going to go, everything had changed because I'd met him. I'd met him, and he'd been there my whole, the whole time guiding me, supernaturally, supernaturally. And I just, I really have a heart for those people who are stuck in this, who think they're, they're doing good, who think they're, you know, benefiting people's lives. And many times they are, like I said, it'll benefit temporarily. But the truth is what matters. The word of God lives forever. Jesus Christ is the same today, tomorrow, and forever. And yesterday, every, you know, he, he is the, Jesus Christ is the creator. Every soul wants to know Jesus deep down. They're not all evil people in the occult. They're deceived. And when we have a heart and we have knowledge of where they're deceived, that they don't know that Jesus is unique, emphasize that. That's what it took. When I, when I accepted Jesus Christ as the unique son of God, everything came after. Everything. I dedicated myself to the word, to knowing the word, to serving him. It was all, if Jesus Christ is God, I'm following him. You know? And that's the true gospel, and that's what... Save my soul. So if the worship team, you want to come up. I just encourage every single person to, to, to keep that heart for the lost. And if you know people who are in this, who are falling into it, they're still Christian, but they're slowly kind of getting into it. They're losing their love for Jesus. They're losing their love for the word. They're, they're thinking the answers are elsewhere, out of the word. Remain loving, but remain knowledgeable. Remain knowledgeable in the truth and in Satan's deceptions because deception can lead to destruction. The good intentions, they can be there, but if you're deceived, Satan will take your soul. And I, I really pray for every single person out there who does not know Jesus as who he truly is. I pray that he reveals himself so powerfully to you, you can never deny it. Like me, I feel like Thomas. It's more blessed to have not seen and believe, but God had to show me supernaturally, powerfully, in so many other ways I didn't even explain here. But I pray that he reveals himself as he truly is and everything you're seeking is in Jesus Christ. Everything, all the healing, he is the great healer. He is the savior. He is the alpha and the omega, the beginning and the end. In everything, he is in everything. Everything we need is in him. You might think it's ridiculous right now that, oh, Jesus, the truth? What do you mean? The truth is... How can that be a person? Just fixate your mind on him. He will show you your calling. He'll show you your destiny. He'll show you who you are, who he created you to be. His love will be dominant in your life. And you'll be able to spread it and you'll be able to know. You'll be, you'll be secure knowing God who created you. You can accept him at any moment, at any time. 
and you will never regret it. 